So today we did the very exciting thing of tacking pistachio up for the first time and getting him used to a saddle pad and then a bareback pad with the girth on. And this is exciting because it's his first time doing this and it's part of getting him started under saddle so that he can eventually become a riding pony. So first I get him used to a saddle pad because this doesn't have any straps or girth on it so it's less noisy than a bareback pad and I can get used to the same shape and feeling as what he's going to be wearing afterwards. Initially, I was feeding him soaked alfalfa pellets because he is losing teeth, so he has a harder time chewing. I ran out, so I had to switch to using the crunchies that I typically use, and they're a bit too large, so he was getting a little bit snatchy because he was trying to bite them in half before he ate them because it was easier for him to eat. So that's not ideal, but we will adjust this by feeding him the soaked pellets going forward and just working on the head away and being less snatchy for treats. So that's kind of why you see him biting because he's trying to bite those guys in half. Half, so I'm gonna start breaking them in half for his little baby teeth but yeah so we get him used to the pad first to take it on and off a bunch of times you can see him raise his head and he looks a little bit concerned so this tells me that he's not ready for doing more than this yet so I keep doing it a few times and then we'll go on the other side and do the same thing and get him used to that and the key is just to keep doing it repeatedly until it gets boring to him because we don't want to have an unnecessary flight reaction that could be avoided so I can see he's a little bit concerned and because of that I am continuing continuing to go at a pace that he's most comfortable. Now I'm bringing it to his bum, even though we won't be putting something there just because that typically sets them off a little bit more. He took a step back, so I put it back on in the normal place where I was desensitizing him to first and then brought it back over to his bum. And then now I'm rubbing it all over and pulling it down his tail head so that he can feel it sliding off of his bum. Again, this is not where we're gonna put the saddle pad, but it sacks him out and gets him used to having stuff touch him all over. It's also a good way to just prepare them for when a rider does get on them because sometimes when you swing your leg over, you can accidentally skim over their bum and that can scare them. So doing stuff like this and rubbing them all over with the saddle pad just prepares them a little bit better um, and allows them to kind of be prepared for situations where it might not go completely as expected. So I really like doing this and I like doing it a bunch of times because then it's going at their pace and ensuring that they're really okay with it and not flinching or trying to move or run away anymore. Uh, and it's just safer. And this is how you help avoid like situations where you have the horse fully tacked and then they start bronking because they weren't actually ready to be fully tacked. So I start at the saddle pad and I like to go nice and slow with that because I think it's important to just make sure that they're comfortable and happy doing what they're doing. And it's really easy to just prepare them with a strong foundation and it makes everything easier when you are getting on them. And it's also safer for both horse and rider because for me personally, like I don't want to be unnecessarily put in a position where I could be severely injured when I'm starting a horse if it's not something that is necessary at all and if it's completely avoidable which generally speaking it is so now I have the bareback pad he's nervous of the strap on the other side because it kind of flaps and makes a sound when it goes over so I'm being mindful of that um, and I also have the girth there and it sometimes swings and, and hits his leg which kind of scares him so yeah I'm doing it repeatedly a few times but then you'll notice I kind of swing the girth over the top of the saddle uh, so that it's not swinging around as much and this is just to get him used to the strap on the other side first rather than both straps at the same time because he was a little bit upset about it. I took the saddle pad off just because the bareback pad will go on without a saddle pad underneath of it so I'm just preparing him with it like that and doing it yeah repeatedly again because he was uncomfortable he showed me that he was uncomfortable with how his posture changed and how he shifted and tried to back away a little bit when the girth went on and when the or sorry not the girth when the bareback pad went on so it shows me that he's not fully comfortable with it so it would be a mistake at this point to try to cinch this up because if he's not comfortable with it just sitting on his back he's going to be even more uncomfortable when it is done up around his belly so we don't want to do that that's how you get the bronch response because then they feel the need to get the scary thing off of their back but then it's strapped to them and then you have escalating panic so do not do up the cinch if they're not happy and okay with it just sitting there on their back and having it repeatedly taken on and off the reason why i take it on and off so much is that it creates movement it creates sound and then they're having use they're getting used to having the thing touch them and move all over their stomach and their belly and their back and as you saw there i pulled it over with the girth and the girth slid across his back too that's another way to get them used to things touching them in a different way it makes the girth 
rattle. It makes the buckles of the girth make sounds. And this all helps get them used to the sounds that can be made on them when a rider is on them. Because even the things like your clothes making a different noise, your, your jacket swishing, buckles on your boots making sounds, these are all things that could stack as potential triggers that then contribute to a flight response. So these are all things to consider. So getting them used to as many different noises and sensations as you can before getting on them is a really good way to prepare them for potential things that could scare them when you're then on top of them because as soon as there's a rider on top of them it is a scarier situation for a horse to be in even when they are well prepared so triggers are more likely to stack in that situation so you're better off reducing and mitigating those triggers in the beginning now what I'm doing here is I'm taking the girth and I'm putting it through the other buckle on the side but I'm not buckling it. I'm just applying pressure so he can get used to the feeling against his sternum and just getting used to the idea of the girth being sewn up. It's not as tight as what it would be when it's actually on and I'm not buckling it. I just hold the end because this means that if he did start to panic I can release it easily and he's not in a position where he can't feel like he can escape what he's afraid of. So I like to just hold the end of it and practice like applying pressure and and then I'm clicking and rewarding him for that and then undoing it again afterwards and then kind of doing the whole thing repeatedly. So I loosen it and I tighten it. I loosen it and I tighten it, but I am not buckling it at this point because we were just at the beginning stages, getting him used to the idea of having something snug around his belly. And this is something that can cause horses a lot of fear because it's not the same as when they're wearing blanket straps. It's very different. The girth is a lot tighter than what properly fitted blanket straps would be. So even if they've been blanketed and worn these things, it's a way different context so you need to reintroduce it and make sure that they're okay with this new context and honestly you can't really over prepare a horse so you can do this repeatedly as many times as you feel necessary for the horse to be comfortable if they are if you do it more times than necessary all it's going to do is make sure they're more comfortable and it might take a little bit longer but it's better to over prepare than under prepare because if you do get a major flight response when you first saddle them or when you first sit on them you're way more likely to continue having issues under saddle because then they scare themselves that much so now i'm holding it again and we're just asking him to to walk a few steps because a lot of horses even if they're okay standing still and having the girth tightened as soon as you start to walk them they could get a little bit upset and that's where you can also see um, hunching of the back and potential bucking behaviors so we're just doing a walk and I'm holding the end of it because then if he did freak out and start to bronc I can loosen it but I'm also watching his posture because a lot of the horses that are nervous they'll still be flinching when you are doing the girth stuff and you can also see a hump in their back right behind the saddle typically so I like making sure that they're okay with it before doing it up all the time all the way so he walked a few steps and now i have it done up now i'm just turning him loose in the arena because i'm letting him walk around and kind of do stuff freely by himself because again a lot of horses when they first get set loose they might have a reaction where they bronc with the saddle on especially when they trot so i like to make sure that that's not going to be the case turn them loose let them feel what it, it feels like to move around differently and do different gates and then come back to it What is this? <laughs> oh man. It says there's a baby cavorting over there. It's like, hi, friend. Why is she okay with him, but literally no one else? With the mounting block, standing above a horse worries a lot of horses. So I like to get on like the first or the second step first and just come up briefly, click and reward. And I do this repeatedly just to make sure that they're not going to spook at me being above them. This helps ensure that once I am on their back, that they're not going to be worried about having someone standing above them. Also, the mounting block is incredibly important for training purposes. And giving him breaks in between just allows him to decompress if it was stressful or difficult to stand still for an extended period of time. So giving him breaks is just another way to help reduce any anxiety. So now I'm standing on the top 
part of this mounting block and I'm just tapping the bareback pad. I do this because it makes sounds. So the sound is similar to like when you're sitting yourself in the bareback pad. So I like to tap it and make sure the sound isn't going to bother him first before I even consider bellying over or do any of that. As you can see, he's raising his head and he is more nervous when I tap it. So that's a sign that he's not super comfortable with me touching and tapping this bareback pad and making sounds. So again, he raised his head and he's a little bit more nervous, but he's staying in place and he's not completely panicked. But since he is still raising his head and nervous and since he walked away there, that's a sign that I need to practice this more before even considering bellying over him. Also important to do things from both sides so they can get used to having a person standing above them on either side and leaning over on either side and just touching the pad and whatnot on either side. This helps ensure that when you do get on that they're not going to be afraid of having a leg on either side of them. So practicing with both sides is important. As you can see, he is more nervous about me on this side. So he needs more repetition with me standing above him and practicing touching the bareback pad. So now I come off of the mounting block and I'm patting the bareback pad on the ground because it was just a little bit too much for me to do this on the right side while standing above him. So I'm lowering the criteria and I'm coming and I'm standing behind him to get him used to that sound on the ground before we go back to the mounting block and practice the same thing. This just helps set him up for success better and it helps us work on this uh, concern of his without it being too overwhelming and this also allows him to be more comfortable with it a lot quicker. So as you can see he's getting way more comfortable with me touching his back and like pretending to bounce around and just like patting this, the bareback pad and making sounds um, and he's definitely more comfortable when I'm doing it from the ground so doing it here first before going back to the block was a good decision for him because he's just more comfortable with it and that's totally okay the behaviors they give you are communication and they should be treated as such so listen to what they tell you once he gets rid of his winter woolies he's going to be so flipping adorable he already is but I mean even more beautiful now, I practiced on the ground and now we're back at the mounting block. I reward him for lining up with the mounting block. Now I'm just tapping on the first stair, making sounds like it would be when I'm climbing up the mounting block and just doing it slowly. So second stair, click and reward, and then coming back up the stairs and making more sound. So the purpose of this is just to help him learn like exactly what the steps are for a rider getting on him. So it's repeating the same little steps that are all part of getting on a horse and riding it, but doing so enough times that he really understands the process so that there's not a reason to be fearful or surprised by anything so yeah i'm continuing to do this he's still a little bit nervous he's lifting his head to see me so i'm going to keep doing this repeatedly and just help him out uh, i also don't have anyone holding him because this also allows him to just walk away if he wants to um, it gives me a more clear reading of his behavior if there's not someone at his head preventing him from walking forward so i like doing this first to make sure that they're really okay it is a bit more dangerous for the person especially once you start bellying over because in theory the horse could run away from you um, while you're trying to get on but if you prepare them properly they shouldn't be at that point where they feel the need to suddenly run away because you'll be taking all these little steps that will allow you to prepare them enough that by the time you belly over them and get on them that there won't be a response like that wow this mountain block is like a tiny bit too tall you could turn it sideways and use the middle step if you wanted, but that's okay. It just makes you where you're more above him, which if he's brave about is also not a bad thing. Yeah. I really want to hug him. I'm so proud of him. You're a good boy. Mm -hmm. Says my mouth is clumsy though right now. He's pro is he losing some teeth, do you think? Now that he's comfortable with me on the stairs, I'm practicing starting to lean over him. And as you saw in that last clip, he wasn't comfortable, so he moved away, which is okay. And again, not having someone at his head allows him to do that. So it's less stressful because if he had someone at his head holding him still when he tries to move away, then he wouldn't be able to do that. So now I'm practicing tapping again. He did take a step back, so he's a little bit nervous. I waited until he stopped moving and then clicked and rewarded. And now we're going back to leaning over. And as you can see, he's still uncomfortable. So we're going to keep repeatedly doing this because I want him to really understand what I I'm doing. So I'm going to keep laying over him like that and just doing it lightly. I'm not doing a full belly over right now because he's a little bit concerned. I don't want to go too fast and potentially have a big flight response because that will slow me down. It'll put me back several steps if I scare him to the point where he really feels like I need to get away from her and fast.
Now that I've leaned over him a couple times, I'm going to try leaning a little bit further over and trying to feed him over the other side because this allows him to accept a reward while also seeing me laying all the way over and feeling what it feels like to have a person leaning on his back. So it's just a good way of rewarding him and helping him clarify like what I'm actually doing and seeing me at the other angle, making sure he's looking at me with that right eye and understanding the process while making it rewarding and fun for him. And it also simulates the bellying over in a way that he's more comfortable with. His mouth is too full. I've been pumping him too full of treats and he's losing teeth, so he needs a second to chew. So we give him a second to chew and then we are back at it, leaning over again. And I'm starting to give him smaller handfuls just because I'm used to feeding full-sized horses and he's a pony and his mouth is little, so I have to give him less, so... <laughs> So you can really see where he starts to understand the process and what we're doing. He's still a little bit unsure, but that's okay because this is new and it's different. But yeah, he's starting to understand what we're doing. He knows that right after I belly over, he gets a reward. Now I have Janae at his head, but it's not to keep him still. It's just to keep giving him rewards because I was concerned that if I bellied over and had my entire treat pouch spill all over him, that I would cause some concern to happen. So it made more sense to have someone on the ground feed him so that I can continue bellying over on him without potentially scaring him by having my feed bucket rattle or potentially losing all of my food by having it spill. So this way is easier for me and it's safer. There are some treat pouches that are good for riding in, but even still, if they don't have like a lid on them, I would probably avoid them. As he gets more comfortable with bellying over, I'm starting to put more of my weight on so my feet are off the mounting block. As you saw, he turned back and looked at me, so he's a little concerned. I'm also taking my other arm and I'm touching his side where my leg would go. Nice bum, where are you from? <laughs> Using my arm to touch his side and rub his side while I am getting on him helps prepare him for the feeling of the leg on the other side of him. So now I sat down on him and I got right back off and now I'm just getting on and off several times because getting him used to it, it's a different feeling, different center of balance and my legs are very long. So they hang down further than what my arms would be able to when I am bellied over. So we're just practicing and my mom's just being the reward person. She is luring him a little bit with her hand when she moves it away like that and it is making him more mouth so don't do that ideally don't lure with food we warned her about this after good boy good job buddy So I get my mom to lead him away from the mounting block because it just helps him out a little bit more. He's very broke to lead and he even does liberty leading. So having someone there to help him take those first couple steps is safer for me to have a header and it's also more comfortable for him. So I got off after a few steps and then I got back on. Again, there's my mom playing with his mouth. Do not do that, especially in situations that are new where the horse is a little bit more nervous because they're way more likely to be mouthy and nippy. But she was having fun playing with his mouth and I didn't notice it as much until this video but yeah ideally don't do that um i know it's tempting when they have cute noses but don't so the goal of this first ride is just to get him used to the sensation and the weight of a rider comfortably. It's not to teach him anything complex. I don't really see the point in trying to get them going walk, trot, canter within a first ride. It's often way too much for most horses unless you've extensively prepared their groundwork for that prior and basically have them broke all the way from the ground before you get on. But even then, it's just easier to make the first ride underwhelming and easy because then they're just like, oh, that was all cool, nice, and it's simple. So that's all we did with him is the walking. Okay. Oh my god. And the ducks and stuff, but look at how like he is. An amazing little pong pong. Um you could probably you could go grab Togo or Mario or Mario or Mario or Mario.
So yeah, that's what the first ride should look like in my opinion. There's no need for bucking or unnecessary fireworks. And again, this is why you don't play with their noses. She's playing with his nose again. Don't do that. Anyways, yeah, there's no need for unnecessary bucking or fireworks or spookiness when you're starting a horse for the first time. Those are indicators that some steps have been missed and the horse needs to be prepared better. And of course, like sometimes things happen, you can't always control all the triggers that may set your horse off. And that is totally okay. But the goal should be to have the first ride go as quietly as as possible. A really good first ride should be boring because there's not going to be any exciting cowboy moments if you prepare them properly and that's really something I stand by and it's way safer for both horse and rider. I have no interest in endangering myself at all unnecessarily now that I know better and can do better so this is how I want all of my first rides to go where they're as calm as possible and underwhelming for the horse. Thank you for watching and I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out out my links down below in the description. I have a bunch of awesome products available in store, including bridles, saddle pads, uh, quarter zips, breeches, tights, and more. And today only for Easter, they are on sale for 20% off with code Easter. That sale will end at the end of the day today though, so highly recommend checking it out soon.